Voila. Now, here we are. Then uh, I will talk about uh, chirality and wobbling in nuclei, new achievements and perspective. First of all, thank Nico for inviting me to give a talk here. Uh, the first transparency, as you can see, is a list of collaborators uh, and uh, the photo of some of them. You immediately realize that there are many Chinese uh, collaborators, uh, starting with uh, Bing Feng Liu and Quan Quan Zheng, uh, which uh, were my PhD student. And then uh, Guo Song that you heard uh, just before the coffee break. Uh, Alain Astier, uh, a senior uh, here in the lab, uh, and the collaborator from South Africa, Elena Lowry, and two theoreticians, uh, Fang Chi Chen and uh, Yang Sing Liu. Uh, you see, I, I did not put, but you will see some photos uh, of the collaborators from Beijing, from the group of Jimang, and also from uh, Chongqing, Zipan Li. Uh, in the list, uh, there are the countries uh, in which we perform the experiment. And then Finland uh, and uh, these three people, which uh, contributed a lot to that, uh, to our collaboration, from Italy, Daniele Mengoni, uh, Poland with Julian and Andrei Tukowski, and uh, Sweden with the, the group of Bo Sederval, uh, Hungary, Janos Timar, Kuti, and Dora Zoller, Canada. Corinne Andreoi and his group uh, in Germany, uh, Kibo Chibo Chen, and also from US, Stefan Freundel. I will talk about two successful experiments, one performed with uh, RE2 and Neurogam 2 in 2016, and another one with Galileo, Euclides, and Neutron World uh, a year later. The first one with the read to a neurogam was devoted to the study of the neodymium uh, nuclei. Do you see my point, huh? by the way? You don't see the pointer? Let me. Hmm. Okay, maybe you will see it. Then uh, the topics were uh, focused on chiral bands and also uh, on wobbling. And uh, concentrated in the nuclei around the neodymium 135 uh, and 36. The other experiment was uh, devoted to the study of barium, barium 130 and 31 mainly. And then uh, you will see uh, some results from those. The first uh, setup is this one. And uh, uh, we populated neodymium nuclei using argon and molybdenum with a very high intensity beam for one week. Here is uh, Bin Feng and uh, Yuha Usital, a K person in. Uh, in all the experimental setup and also contact person Paul Greenlees. You know Eurogamma, which is a very powerful gamma array, uh, and then also behind it uh, the Rito recoil mass spectrometer with a gas field. We use uh, both. In the other experiment, we use the uh, Galileo plus Euclides plus neutron wall. Galileo is uh, an array of uh, germanium detectors, a neutron wall, many scintillator detectors put at forward angles. And Euclides is uh, a ball of uh, delta E silicon detectors. Uh, the contact uh, there was Daniele Mangoni that you see here smiling. We measure for one week using a carbon 13 beam. About the chiral mode, there are these two uh, gentlemen, uh, Stefan Freindorf and Jim Meng, that uh, put it forward a long time ago. And they found the uh, Praseodium 34 as a good example. Um, the chiral geometry is related to this, to, to the fact that we have uh, three orthogonal angular momenta, which can come in a node dot nucleus from a proton, a neutron, end of the core. And as you can see, the total angular momentum due to the symmetries can point in one or another direction in 3D. 
here uh, in this nice picture that uh, was produced by uh, these two gentlemen a long time ago, uh, is shown what is happening for a nucleus with a maximum triaxiality when we have two holes, a neutron and a proton hole in a high J orbiter. Uh, you, you can see uh, without rotation, the two angular momenta are aligned along the third axis, and then we increase in rotational frequency, B, we build angular momentum around the second intermediate axis if, if we have a hydrodynamical moment of inertia. And then the, the total angular momentum is uh, uh, sliding in, in a plane, in the two, three plane here. This gives rise to this kind of bands, uh, and there are uh, six bands that are drawn here. If we have a, a particle in a hole, then a proton particle and a neutron hole, uh, due to the maximum overlap between the density distribution of the proton, neutron, and the core, uh, the hole remains aligned the third, along the third axis, the particle along the first axis, then without rotation, the angular momentum is in the one, three plane. With increasing angular momentum along uh, the second axis, the total angular momentum points in 3D, like shown here in this figure. Then this chiral geometry, uh, which gives rise, as you can see here, a doubling of each of these bands here, uh, uh, which are nearly degenerate, then uh, gives rise to, uh, as we call, chiral doublet bands. Then uh, bands uh, consisting of mainly M1 transitions and E2 crossovers. The simplest chiral geometry, then it is in an odd order nucleus, uh, in which we couple a proton, uh, a neutron, and a core. But we can have a chirality in three quasi particle configuration on even nuclei, in which uh, we can have one neutron and two protons coming from a broken pair, for example. And in this case, uh, you see that uh, the angular momentum is not very well balanced uh, concerning the two uh, or the nucleons, and uh, the chiral motion should be observed at a higher uh, rotational frequency just to allow the total angular momentum to go out in 3D. And then um, we can also have, then it's more complicated, we can also have uh, chirality in an even, even nuclei. And in that case, uh, the, the, the configurations are even more complicated, consisting of two protons and uh, two neutrons uh, with angular momenta aligned perpendicularly, then perpendicular to the rotational frequency. Uh, or, or to the angular momentum of the core. And you see two neutrons which uh, orbit like that and two, pro, two protons orbiting like that and two neutrons orbiting like that, giving rise to this angular momenta. Uh, such configurations, uh, of course, should be observed uh, at a higher uh, angular momenta and a higher rotational frequency, higher excitation energy in general. What happened um, is that uh, in the experiment performance Givascula, uh, we populated this Neodymium 36 uh, that uh, I've studied 20 years before using the GASP array. And then uh, we identified many rotational bands like those uh, which are consisting of E2s uh, and uh, were consistently interpreted uh, as based on nearly maximum triaxiality. We also identify several, you see five, uh, we call them dipole bands because they are consisting of mainly M1's uh, E2 crossovers. Uh, and um, looking at uh, the properties of those bands, uh, we did not observe the, the predicted uh, chiral uh, uh, bands because you see, for example, these two bands which have levels which are uh, very close in energy uh, they are different because here we have uh, E2 crossovers, here we don't have. Then the M1s here are much stronger than there. And then um, we were a little bit uh, worried about uh, how, why we did not observe the chiral bands in uh, such a uh, well triaxial nucleus. And then uh, in order to perform the experiment, we put forward uh, the fact that uh, there are also two bands of uh, quadrupole transitions here, so with uh, even and 
pod spins, uh, which can be wobbling bands. Uh, and then um, what we have done, we performed the experiment and uh, found uh, uh, not only one chiral band, uh, but five chiral doublet bands in this Neodymium 26. And then I call it the apotheosis of chirality because I think uh, this record of five chiral bands in the single nucleus can be uh, difficult would be, uh, would be passed by somebody else. In the near future with the present uh, uh, arrays with a certain, with their uh, powerful, with their power. And then uh, look, uh, the level scheme as it looks like after discovering these uh, chiral bands, uh, here you have the uh, known bands uh, named uh, D1, D2, up to D5. And uh, for each one, you see, we found a, a band uh, drawn here with different colors, which decay to the Uras band through uh, many uh, high energy transitions. Um, uh, higher than one MeV. The reason for which we did not observe previously because, was because uh, the intensity of those bands was much lower than the intensity of the already observed bands with, uh, with Galileo. It is, is 0.50 with respect to, to 2% and uh, more than one out of magnitude weaker. How we discovered it, uh, just by case. Uh, you see, uh, putting gates in one of the bands, this band D2, uh, double gating from the bottom of the band. You see, we saw the band and the high, uh, high energy part of the spectra, we observed some peaks. And then um, making several combinations of double gates, uh, going up in the band, uh, you see how uh, the peaks, which are all present when we get uh, at the very bottom of the band, disappear one of the, after the other. You see, when we get uh, to the next uh, two transitions in the band, this peak disappear. When we get to the next one, this one disappear, and so on. And then uh, by uh, investigating the coincidences, we identified first those transitions, then we identify the bands and then look for the transitions, uh, the M1 transition leading those and we found them. And the same happened with, uh, with all the other bands. Once found one of the band, then uh, it was naturally to ask us if uh, such bands exist in the, uh, for the other dipole bands and we identified them all. As you can see, uh, these bands can have uh, four or even six uh, quasi particle configurations. Uh, that one has a six quasi particle configuration. It has, um, uh, you see, uh, important is that the number of particles and the number of holes to be similar. We have three proton particles here, here and two neutron holes plus one neutron, uh, one proton hole, then three particles and three holes. So then. Uh, the angular momenta along uh, the two perpendicular axes uh, can be similar. Uh, the Menx group uh, immediately performed calculations for these bands, and as you can see, they found a very nice agreement of the excitation energy. You see here, rotational frequency versus spin. You remember the discussion of yesterday between Stefan Feindorf and uh, uh, John Wood. In fact, uh, this rotational frequency is the uh, 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 the gamma energy divided by two. And then there are the, the same plots are, uh, are produced uh, by simply uh, dividing uh, the gamma energy by two. And then uh, they also produce uh, the very good uh, agreement for the B of M1 over B of E2. When I say very good, you see when the band was uh, not uh, distorted by some crossing, the agreement is very good. First of all, the transition probabilities in the Uras and the chiral partner are very similar. Uh, and uh, the calculations, which is the line here, it is just passing through the points. Uh, in the other one, oh, the, the agreement was uh, good at the bottom of the band, uh, but the crossings were not uh, addressed. Um, the um, aligned angular momenta were also well reproduced and then analyzed and helped us to uh, 
assign the configurations to all the bands. Immediately after that, uh, Chibo Chen developed uh, a particle rotor motor with uh, four or many J shells. Then he could uh, uh, then uh, apply this development of the particle rotor motor for multi quasi particle configurations to the case of uh, Neodymo Hardware 36. And as you can see, energy minus uh, rigid rotor how good uh, agreement he succeeded to obtain for all the bands uh, that uh, have been observed. And also the B of M1 over B of E2, you see uh, the agreement is uh, exceptionally good. With the same uh, formalism, uh, he also could uh, investigate the, the, the geometry of the angular momenta. You see here for uh, is, this is only one example for this band D5. You see, uh, for which uh, the transition probabilities were very well reproduced, the energy well reproduced. It is it consists of three particles uh, and uh, three holes. You see, two proton and one neutron particle and three holes, two proton and one neutron hole. As you can see here, uh, here is, is shown the angular momentum of the two proton holes and one neutron, uh, two proton particles and one neutron particle. As you can see, uh, uh, the projection of the angular momentum of the short axis is larger, whereas for the holes, the projection of the angular momentum of the long axis is highest. And then this uh, means that uh, the angular momentum is well balanced and then together with the rotational angular momentum can give this uh, 3D um, uh, geometry. Once uh, I identified that, we uh, analyzed uh, immediately the other two nuclei which were producing the reaction, which is Neodymium 135. And then Bing Feng uh, succeeded to identify many transitions uh, between uh, bands that uh, uh, were not well established in previous experiments. Um, and also add uh, some transitions to a couple of bands uh, which were uh, already studied and uh, interpreted as uh, chiral bands, in fact, uh, um, chiral vibration in bands. Then, uh, as you can see, in addition to this band, we succeed to uh, convince uh, ourselves and the referee that uh, there is another couple of uh, chiral bands uh, which uh, have uh, excitation energy like that, transition probability like that. And then uh, a difference to these two bands, which were built on one neutron hole and two proton particles all in H11 mass, it is uh, only one proton which is moved from an H11 half to a G7 half. And then we get uh, a good uh, uh, interpretation of this band. The same. Uh, uh, has happened in Neodymium 137. This is very recent. Uh, we also we know, we knew the level scheme of this uh, nucleus. Uh, we had two candidates for color bands that, again, you see, they were very different. One had uh, uh, crossover C2s, the other one did not have, then they, they were interpreted as uh, different configurations. And Looking uh, carefully in the data, we succeed to identify two other bands which decay to these uh, uh, other bands, which are the corresponding bands of Neodymium 135. Then also in this nucleus, we identify the same thing that has been observed in Neodymium 35, then uh, a couple of parallel bands built on a 3H11 half configuration, and an, uh, then it would be a negative parity and a positive parity uh, couple of bands which are built on a configuration in which uh, one proton is moved from H to G7 up. But one of the most important uh, results uh, um, was obtained uh, in barium 131, and this analysis, a very careful analysis, has been done again by Guo Song. Um, and then uh, in this case, uh, he was able to identify three chiral bands, uh, one built on a negative parity states and uh, two, other, uh, two others on the positive parity states. You see, um, 
this, uh, in addition to, to, to the decay transition toward the uh, Uras band, which is that one, B2, built on edge and uh, he could identify many E2 transitions between this negative parity band and the other two bands of positive parity, but uh, without a preference between this one and those ones. Then in this case, uh, uh, these two bands um, are something like, uh, uh, are built on something like a pseudo spin uh, uh, orbitals, uh, which uh, is quite normal because uh, the Fermi surface on the case of the protons here is uh, uh, around uh, D55 G7 hours. And again, uh, the main group calculated uh, and developed, first of all, the models. Uh, uh, to include uh, not only uh, the triaxiality but also the octopole uh, correlations because uh, here these E2 transitions that we saw before uh, are due to some correlations, uh, some octopole correlations, which are in fact uh, expected in this uh, vacuum nuclei, which have uh, a matching number uh, with respect to the octopole correlations with the Z equal 56. And you can see uh, there is a good uh, qualitative global agreement of all the quantities which were uh, extracted and compared the theory. Then uh, the energy, the signature, the transition probabilities, the aligned spin. Okay. And then, as I told you, um, uh, the, the Manx group made a, a, a huge effort. And then uh, one of the uh, latest uh, uh, um, results from that group is that they established selection rules for electromagnetic transitions for chirality parity violation in atomic nuclei. Then they developed uh, uh, the formalism and uh, found the selection rules for uh, the transitions between uh, uh, bands in nuclei uh, in which the octopole correlations are important. This is a very nice picture which shows uh, how uh, uh, the four shapes and the angular momentum uh, momenta are oriented if we plot it as a function of the octopole deformation or the phi uh, angle, which is uh, the one between the projection of total angular momentum on the one, two, and, uh, and, uh, and, the, and the one axis. And so you see here this uh, azimuthal plot, as they call it, uh, in which uh, you see that the minima in all uh, four uh, bands uh, are uh, at angles which are different from zero and 90 degrees, and uh, here at around the four, 30 degrees and 45 degrees, which shows, uh, in fact, uh, that uh, there is this um, uh, chiral geometry present in uh, in, even in uh, nuclei with uh, reflection asymmetry. And then uh, this uh, paper has been published in the Science Bulletin very recently, and I also made a comment on that, uh, just to uh, highlight uh, the contribution of this group to, to, to the topic of chirality in general. You see, very interesting, and then uh, they, in order to characterize the selection rules, they introduced two new quantum numbers, which are K2 A, which is similar to the signature R, and Kplex, which is similar to the simplex, which is a product, which is more common known in the nuclear with octuple correlations. Conclusion of that is that uh, uh, in uh, very recent years, uh, uh, we succeeded to identify many chiral bands, uh, first of all, in three uh, new neodymium isotopes, which makes uh, uh, a sequence of, uh, you see, four uh, neodymium nuclei in which we have uh, multiple chiral bands. Uh, the most uh, exotic one is neodymium 36 with five chiral partners. And uh, uh, in this there. kind of plot in which we have all the known uh, chiral bands as a function of N on Z, published by Chong and Wang in uh, AD and DT, very recently, 2018, we also, uh, we need to, to add a new line uh, here uh, corresponding to the barium nuclei in which we identify 
three uh, chiral doublets. And then you can see from this that uh, this uh, field of research in which we are investigating exotic rotation modes uh, is very uh, active. Now, after uh, talking about chirality, I will uh, move uh, to wobbling topic. And then wobbling outside the mass 160 region. And then uh, already the conclusions uh, are written here that uh, at high spin, two quasi particle wobbling may exist, uh, whereas at low spin, uh, the one quasi particle wobbling bands may be not. Let's start with that. The wobbling bands, uh, the theoretical predictions and calculations have been done uh, based on uh, what uh, Ben Motelson predicted uh, together with Bohr in 75. Here there are uh, four persons which are very uh, well known. Gudrun Ageman, Ben Haskin, Guy Sletten, uh, Herbert Hubel, uh, which, and also together with uh, uh, Ikuko Amamoto, which uh, uh, contributed a lot to, to, to the wobbling uh, research. And then uh, there is also uh, these two other uh, photos with a couple of Casco, uh, Sugafara uh, Tanabe, and Kosai Tanabe, and Stefan Freund, which contributed uh, recently uh, to, to a debate of the wobbling bands in, uh, uh, in uh, nuclei at low speed. Uh, just to, to, to tell you, you, you see which is uh, approximation, which is valid for the wobbling mode, uh, which is in the paper in, in the book of Bohr and Motors, and is that the angular momentum should be uh, much larger than the projection of the angular momentum on the two other on the two other axes, which are perpendicular to the rotation of the axial nucleus. And then in this approximation, you see that the energy can be um, separated in a rotor part and a, a oscillating part. The oscillation with a oscillating with a oscillation frequency, which depends on the moment of uh, inertia of the nucleus around the three axes, and then, then this is the number of the phonon quantum. And then um, you see the reporting wobbling bands in, uh, uh, in, uh, in the year 2000 uh, were, uh, for example, here in lutetium-163, uh, um, based on the fact that there are uh, triaxial minima uh, at a high deformation at around 0 0.4. And then they were interpreted uh, as, uh, uh, we call it now longitudinal wobbling in the sense that uh, the angular momentum of the odd proton in this lutetium, it is uh, uh, aligned uh, along the angular momentum of the core. And this is normal because the higher rotational frequency, the Coriolis force will align this uh, J to R. These nuclei then are uh, more deformed uh, and uh, these bands are observed at high spins. The recent uh, wobbling, uh, claimed wobbling bands in uh, in these nuclei, which are in the mass 130, praseodymium lantern, but also in the mass 180 in gold, uh, these are uh, bands which develop from low spin. Uh, you see, they are, uh, yes, they're actually deformed, but uh, very, uh, very soft. The deformation is smaller at around 0 0.2. And uh, the proposed uh, interpretation of these uh, obling bands uh, was that uh, the angular momentum of the odd proton is in fact uh, perpendicular, is in maintain, is frozen, uh, maintained perpendicular to the angular momentum of the core. This kind of interpretation of, uh, of a transverse wobbling uh, was uh, criticized by the Tanabe. Uh, which performed calculations for this pressure 135. And in the, this very nice figure, they show that, for example, at the bottom of the band, the angular momentum of the uh, nucleus is oriented like that, whereas at the higher spin, the angular momentum, uh, the total angular momentum is completely uh, uh, reoriented along the, the rotation axis to the, the Coriolis force. The same has been uh, uh, recently. Uh, 
shown by uh, Elena, uh, who uh, uh, introduced this kind of, uh, he introduced, he analyzed this function, which is already uh, present in the book of Bohr and Mott, that's one which expresses uh, this condition of the high angular momentum uh, in terms of uh, moment of inertia, which shows that uh, um, you see uh, this function as a function of spin, uh, it can go to very low value because it should be much more than one in the wobbling regime. It can go to very low value at high spins if the coupling of the angular momentum of the other particle and the core is parallel, but it will never go to, to zero when the, the coupling is transverse. This is the case for the um, uh, longitudinal transverse uh, uh, wobbling in for the one phonon wobbling and for the two phonon wobbling. The same happens uh, in, uh, in, in, in other nuclei like praseodym uh, here and palladium. As you can see, they are triaxial, yes, uh, but uh, for, uh, for the transverse geometry, this is not, uh, the, 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 the condition for the wobbling motion is not fulfilled because uh, as you can see, this function never goes to zero. It can go to zero if we assume that the core is uh, axial or spherical, but when it is triaxial, it goes up. It has spins which is in contradiction with this uh, transverse wobbling. However, uh, we can have a uh, uh, wobbling at, uh, yes? Hostel, could you please uh, move slowly to the conclusion because the time is slightly over. <laughs> it's over, okay. Uh, but I, I am very close. Thank you. To the end. Then about uh, the closing, uh, uh, about the, um, the wobbling um, of uh, an even even nuclei. It has not been observed yet, but uh, very recently in uh, barium 130, two bands uh, which are built on a two proton configuration, then uh, two cosi particle coupled to a triaxial core can have um, um, an wobbling character. And in fact, you see Chibok Chen, which you see here, uh, he calculated uh, with uh, his model with the multi J triaxial portal rotor model plus triaxial core. Uh, he calculated the two bands uh, and then good, uh, had a good uh, agreement. He also uh, calculated the transition probabilities, which shows that uh, they are both small. Then in the case of these two cosi particle configurations, we don't need to have a much larger BOF2 for the transitions connecting one band to the other because of the two protons present here, which have uh, uh, then, uh, which induce a magnetic moment, which is larger than the contribution of the one transitions to the connecting transitions is larger. And then you can see, uh, he calculated uh, the angular momentum composition and found that uh, uh, in fact, the two protons in this case remain uh, um, quite stable uh, uh, over all the, the observed spin range. The same has happened uh, very recently in, uh, in uh, Neodymium 136, in which uh, there are two similar bands. Uh, and as you can see, Fang Chi Chen calculated with the projected shell model, and she found a very nice agreement of the excitation energy and the wobbling frequency. But in this case, due to the nucleus is a little bit less deformed and then more soft, uh, the erosion of the wobbling regime uh, is present rapidly, and the bands, instead of having a, a constant projection on the, on the three axes, is, is going down. Here, there are the, uh, I, I'm not talking uh, because I have uh, out of time about these uh, azimuthal plots, which shows that, uh, in fact, um, for the Uras uh, band and the one phonon band, uh, we have a minimum or a minimum, which is uh, two minima, uh, which corresponds to the wobbling motion. The last but uh, one uh, transparency is uh, again related to, to the problems uh, with experimental results on the one for particle band that you have heard in the talk of uh, Guo Song. 
uh, which shows that there is no easy to extract convincing links in ratio from angular distribution transition, which are weak of 10% of the relative intensities of the bands. And this is the case for Price 35 for the one phonon band, but even more for the two phonon band, also in the cold and lantern. The fact is that, as, as he is shown, uh, drawing such uh, figures in which you show a pure transition, which is not present in the nuclei, uh, gives a, uh, an impression that uh, uh, the interpretation with a large mixing ratio is the good one. But if you draw uh, the curve, which is here in green, for a low mixing ratio, you see that there is no uh, difference between the two curves. Then uh, uh, there is a big uh, ambiguity on that. There is also a problem with the polarization asymmetry, which has a very small errors in the published papers, whereas in, in reality, they are very, very large. Conclusion is that uh, there is a mix of misinterpretation of low spin bands in not even nuclear wobbling bands instead of tilted precession bands. And this is the, uh, the fact in many of the recently published papers on Praseodim, Lantan, Gold, Senon, and um, uh, 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 I would say that uh, uh, for the chirality, uh, uh, if we want to continue and we want uh, the, the research in this field, um, maybe we will look for new types of chiral motion uh, in addition to those already known, or uh, search for new chiral bands in nuclear having not only one broken symmetry, but several ones, like uh, the one which is a re reflection asymmetry, the octuple, uh, nuclear octuple correlations. And the wobbling, we have to consolidate the experimental results which are present, which at present are not conclusive, but only suggest the possible existence of low spin wobbling bands. And we have to measure the mixing ratio with very high precision. And therefore, uh, we need uh, very high statistics, uh, which imply very long beam times uh, or uh, and or very long, uh, uh, very high efficiency setups. And that's all. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Costel, for this comprehensive overview uh, talk. Uh, I'm afraid that we are so late, so we have no time for any uh, questions or comments. Um, I would say that nothing can be said more. So, um, uh, but encourage everybody to use chat or other media to 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 discuss this uh, uh, this uh, issues uh, present uh, issues in, in presented in the stock uh, privately or personally.